and welcome to Tokyo and the 135th edition of an International Ice Hockey Federation Congress. This one featuring delegates from some 70 member nations. It is going to be a very busy few days here in Tokyo, so let's start things off by recapping today's events. I would really like to welcome you to this 135th IHF Congress since the very first one in Paris on May 15th, 1908. But the first time the World General Congress appeared in the annals of the IHF was only in 1982. This is a very good opportunity to remind what the General Congress is. It is the highest legislative body of our Federation at which statutes and bylaws will be discussed and potentially changed and something that only comes around every four years. This obvi obviously means that this IHF Congress, the first ever in Asia, will shape our Federation for the four upcoming years. Many media and also fans tend to believe that the decisions are made at the IHF office in Zurich and that the IHF is what we have in Zurich. But the IHF really is what we see here, 70 countries coming together and making vital decisions and setting the stage for hockey, international hockey going forward. So this is really the forum where the big decisions are being made, not in Zurich. The day featured meetings centered around all of the major championships and Olympic qualification events for the upcoming hockey year. Sweden is again co-hosting the World Championships with Finland. Last year, Helsinki was the main city, and this year, Stockholm will host the final. And Swedish General Secretary Tony Viren is adamant that the attendance issues of last year's portion of the tournament that was held in Stockholm will not be an issue this year. We, we want to show the people, we want to show the, uh, the media, we want to show all the, the, uh, the stakeholders actually that we are, uh, can, can deliver a, a very good championship and we will do. Uh, and our plans is actually right now that I mean this is going to be a festival for each and everyone who loves hockey. And that's our goal and game and, we, uh, and aim and we, we actually, our vision is now to, to deliver one of the best championships ever. Meanwhile, the under-20, the World Junior Championship, moves to the Russian city of Ufa. Officials there will try to match the success and the enthusiasm of the last World Junior Championship in Calgary and Edmonton. Ну, я сам присутствовал на канадском чемпионате мира и был поражен отношением канадцев к молодежному чемпионату, что они принимают его с таким восторгом. Я понял, что Канада в Канаде хоккей это не спорт, а религия. Вот, надеюсь, что у нас будет не хуже. And in other news, during his address to delegates, Rene Fissel saying that he remains, quote, optimistic that the NHL and the NHLPA will see fit to make players available for the Olympic Games. That's Sochi 2014. It will be the fifth consecutive Olympics in which we would have, as Fissel puts it, best on best. And he still thinks that that will happen. However, he went on to say and to concede that until the NHL and the NHLPA have reached a new bargaining agreement, we will, quote, not be able to say much definitively about their participation. But we do know that the players want to play. Uh, that's it for a very busy day in Tokyo. Wednesday proves to be even busier with the election of the IHF president. Fasel will win that by acclamation, as well as three VPs and nine council members. That is coming up on Wednesday, and we will have all the details here on IIHF.com. But for now, I'm Paul Romanuk, and so long from Tokyo.